This episode of Computer Club Lesson is recorded on April the 27th, 2015. Enjoy! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. And we're recording. Good, good, good. Okay, welcome everybody. As any fool can plainly see, we are going to really geek out today. I have two computers going. But my MacBook in particular, we're going to start with that. Because for the longest time, um, if anybody asked me, about what internet television might be and might become. Uh, I said to them, unless you are a real enthusiast like I am, please stay away from it because it's very complicated. Um, it doesn't work well. You have to put up with all kinds of things if you want to watch internet television. That's no longer the case. And now, internet television can be had in a little box, no bigger than my telephone, uh, about that big. Um, and there are boxes out there now, Apple TV, okay, the, from Apple, you plug, you plug it in and you can watch television uh, from the box to the, to the TV. Um, and you can watch what Apple says you can watch. Um, there are others out there that do roughly the same thing. And think of it this way, that a television that you're going to pay four or five thousand dollars for, if it's what's called a smart TV, the technology inside that television will be obsolete in count them folks two years. So if you buy a smart TV today and you're really happy with getting Netflix on it and a couple of other video offerings like Hulu and, and a few others, the technology inside that TV that makes it go will be obsolete and unsupported in two years. So you paid five grand for a smart TV you can't use. And that's what's going to happen. I'm absolutely sure of it. Sure, sure. But um, if you've ever fiddled around with a smart TV, you'll note that um, there are really, uh, there, there's your cable subscription to the television, which you plug into one port from, a, from your cable box. Then there's another, um, essentially, cable box built inside of the television. And that's the technology that will become obsolete. Uh, the, the, the cable suppliers will always be backwards compatible to older televisions. But the technology that's inside of a smart TV now will not be backwards compatible. It's not even forwards compatible. It's only compatible for a couple of years until the technology changes. Well, I'm going to show you um, a program that I have on my Mac which comes in a little box about that big called Android TV. Um, so with that we'll just I'll just show it to you. Oops. Here's the program. It's called XBMC or the newer version of it is called Kodi, K-O-D-I. And what this allows for is for television, uh, internet television that is broadcast all over the world, over the internet, to be aggregated in one place in this program on an Android TV box. And the offerings are stunning. I've pulled up 
right here just because I know it's going to work. Um, the offerings from Britain. BBC Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, BBC News, BBC 1 through 4, ITV 1 through 4, 1 plus through 4 plus. So that's a stunning array of British television that's available to you, as well as sports channels. Uh, there are other things that come in here um, that I haven't really messed with too much because I've been just been made, mainly concerned with the British television on this particular channel. I'm going to back out of here and I'll show you there are a few others. Um, there are sports channels. If you are into live sports of not necessarily football and hockey, but if you follow football, okay, the, the real football with the emphasis on foot, um, if you're a, a big fan of that, the games that come in are worldwide from the soccer powers of Europe, Britain, um, South America, Africa, cricket. If you can get into cricket, all of the test matches from all over the world are available to you. Um, I don't think anybody uh, broadcasts a full-on cricket match, which will last for four days. Can be seven for the test matches. Well, test match cricket, as we know it, is about seven hours. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, automobile racing. Uh, everything from NASCAR, Grand Prix, um, Can-Am series in North America, um, um, road racing, um, off-road racing, motorcycles, it's all there. Um, hockey, as much hockey as you can eat. Um, it's all in there, in these what we call repositories. Uh, here's another neat little repository called PBS TV, PBS Think TV. Um, all of the, or not all of, but a good deal of the programming from PBS has been put online that you can view at your leisure. Things like Nova. You know, if you're big time into Nova, if you're into scientific, if you're into history, uh, if you're into Ken Burns. It's all there. Um, and, and so many more. There is um, one repository. Let me click on it here and see if it will open. But it pretty much does, um, that, uh, that's live sports. There are a few places to get local programming. Um, I didn't write them down, so I'd have to search them out. But uh, CTV uh, from the West is available. Uh, Western stations, Lethbridge, Edmonton, Calgary, but they're all the same, you know, as Ontario. TV Ontario is available on here for programs, not necessarily live TV, uh, and CHCH TV is available um, in live programming if you want to watch that, watch the news during the day and stuff like that. So this is what I am now recommending that, um, for folks that are thinking about internet television. Um, is it expensive? No. The box max will be 200 bucks with programming and support. Now, if you, if you wanted to get one from me, I would be, happily support it, set up all the programming that you would want. One caveat is that most of the boxes work with Wi-Fi, um, but as with any Wi-Fi, if you're looking at streaming something through Wi-Fi, there is a very good chance that the programming will choke, the video will get a little choppy. Um, the only way to do it really is to do it with an Ethernet cable from your 
router to the box. If you can swing that, that's the best way. Um, the other thing is that you need a good solid internet connection and are you getting it from source? If you've got five megabits down as a download speed and you can check that uh, with um, an, internet, an internet speed test like speedtest.net if you go there and just do the test it'll tell you what your download and upload speed is but the download speed is most important with internet television. You need pretty much a minimum of five megs down. At five megs down you can run one Android TV box. If you're like me and you have 50 megs down from Bell Fiber you can run as many as you want. I have um, I've set one um, internet TV up for my wife in her bedroom and I use my MacBook with internet television in my room and um, it works out just absolutely great. We can watch two internet TV boxes at the same time. But I have the bandwidth to do it. But you would have to check yours to make sure it's good enough. You must have a minimum of five megs down. Um, now I don't know whether source um, throttles your speeds after a given number of megabytes down like is it 150, 200? You'd have to ask them. But think of it this way. Internet television is, will use about one meg an hour. One meg an hour. 30 days in a month. So five hours of television every day during that month is 150 megs. Right? or thereabouts, 150, 160 megs. It should not be a problem for you if you're just going to watch specific kinds of programming. Uh, movies, movies coming up the wazoo. They're all on here on some of the movie channels. Um, so you can look at things in that light if you have a cable package right now that you think you can cut back on because you're going to get more of what you want on internet television like sports, like movies, like uh, foreign television, well then there's, there may be a, uh, you know, a cost saving for you if you can cut back your, your service package from the provider. Um, right now and I'm going to change this. Right now, I'm paying um, for satellite TV, I'm paying $140 a month for all you can eat and no pay-per-view. That's going to go away, folks. Uh, for, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to get back down to about 60 bucks a month. I'll save $80 a month on my satellite television bill. So, uh, from um, from satellite television, um, yeah. And the other thing about satellite television is every time I want to watch something, it's cloudy outside and I get rain fade. <laughs> so, are those sites are they constantly updated? Yes, they, they are. All the time? Yes, they are. Now, I uh, I noticed uh, the other night that the uh, the um, this V Dub twenty five. I wanted to watch something on it and it was down. Uh, but now it's back, not fully back, but, but back. All of these, what you could call channels, are in fact what we, what we call repositories. They are repositories of the direct links to get to the television you want to watch. Um, they are not updated by any company. They are updated by enthusiasts who have put these repositories together. If they stop working, the enthusiast will work on the repository to get it back and working again. It doesn't take long, maybe a day or two, but um, for the most part I've only seen um, VW25 go down once uh, in the last three weeks. Um, 
and there are a couple of others that might be a little iffy and punky uh, but for the most part they all work exceedingly well so if you want to uh, if you want to put up with um, they thought that these are put together by enthusiasts and sometimes they may or may not work for the most part they do but if you're looking for something in particular on on a given day and the repository is down you may be disappointed go find something else You've got enough choice. It's not like you don't have choice. Movies, I went through uh, page after page after page after page after page after page of movies on a movie site. Write everything from 1945 right through the last year. My next question, yeah, old stuff as well. Old stuff as well, okay. Right from 45 right through the last year. Uh, page after page after page of it. Uh, some very obscure, some of the great stuff. But it was all there. Um, so that's XBMC, the program, Cody. And it's available, like I said, on a little computer box about that big. There is, uh, you use your television as the head end, as the viewing end, to set it up. Or it can be set up on a computer screen, not a, not a problem there. <clears throat> Once it is set up the way you want it, you now, never have to fiddle with it again. You just use a mouse or a, um, a remote control to go through all of these channels and find the things you want. I find the mouse is better myself. Who are we paying for all this then? Where's the payment for it? <laughs> In this case, um, like I said, it's being put together by enthusiasts um, who scour the internet for the, the available television that is there. And they just, they're just giving you the links to it in this program. If you were really geeky, you could go and find them yourself. I, uh, there was a, quite a while there, quite a stretch last year, where I couldn't get NASCAR racing because I wasn't paying for it on satellite TV. However, I went to Europe and the NASCAR races were broadcast there from ESPN um, over the internet. Was I stealing them? Boy, that's a great question. It's a great question. Let me go, just go back here um, to, um, where, where was it here? Okay. This entry here, this repository. And this repository, UK Live TV. For the most part, British television is what's called geo-locked. In other words, if you're not in the country, you can't watch it over your computer or a television or broadcast via satellite. If you're not in the country and paying the license fees to the British government for your television, televisions in Britain are licensed by the government. That's a lot of money. Um, and so these programs are what's called geo-locked. Uh, if you uh, have ever tried to use Netflix.com instead of Netflix.ca, it won't let you go there, folks. It's geo-locked for an arbitrary line 90 miles from here. 90 miles at Niagara Falls. If you cross over Niagara Falls and you log into a Wi-Fi hub there, I'm happy to show you. Go across the bridge? Nope, not for you. This fixes all that, by the way. So geolocking is, uh, is not an issue with XBMC TV. 
they're, they have found ways of getting the geolock off and allowing you to watch it. There are others that are geolocked, but that's just one example. Um, um, there's a, a program that you can download onto your computer or your phone or your tablet or whatever called iPlayer, and it's from BBC. And that's how, what they use to watch television on devices through iPlayer. Um, iPlayer is geolocked from Britain. This solves that problem. I think it's pretty neat. I think it's pretty neat. <clears throat> now, if you want to download the program Kodi or XBMC for a computer and plug it into your television, uh, the one thing that you do need is um, a digital video input, DVI or HDMI, out from your computer and into your television. It doesn't work very well with a VGA cable. Um, I have it working here. Um, but So just for the sake of argument, I'm going to click on BBC One, open it up, and show you that it in fact works. Um, this is live video on my part, so it may... Oh, there we go. It's working. Even get some sound here, folks. Oops. Thank you, reports. David Cameron came to the city to claim his... So there you go. You see it works perfectly well. And it's working off my telephone, which is... Uh, the, the download speeds of my telephone are not great, especially in this room, but it seems to be working well. This was an intention. So there you go it appears to be working well. And, and the, the same holds true for all of the other uh, kinds of um, repositories that are on here. They all seem to work well at the lower bandwidths, but as I said before, five megabits down is pretty much what you need for any kind of video on the internet. Okay, any more questions about XBMC? Cody. You all seem to be stunned by what I've shown you. Well, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, give it a good think over because um, this might be something that you are interested in. Like I said at the very beginning of this talk, it's I have not endorsed anything um, for a long, long time about IPTV, Internet Protocol TV, or other avenues of getting it, like uh, the gray market that we used to have in satellite television. You could buy a box and have it programmed, and you'd get all the satellite TV that you wanted, all you could eat, but all of that has gone away. But IPTV seems to be the fix. Yes? Did, did it really say, are we paying for this? Or? No. no right. You're buying the box, yes. you're buying the programming, and yes. other like-minded individuals that want this kind of programming and know where to get it have put it together in this program for you to use. Yeah, because except for BBC, English television is free. I mean, BBC... I, ITV is uh, still, uh, still geo-locked. It's geolocked. If you're not in the country, yeah. But if you're if you're not in the country, uh, you can't watch it unless you have a, a rig like this or that little ITV um, Android TV box. When we say Android TV, what we're really talking about is the Android operating system, which is this telephone. This is Android operating system. By the way, I can put XBMC on this telephone and watch it. Is cable or satellite better for this? Um, you will not get this programming on satellite or cable. Um, if you have the right package, you might get BBC Canada 
and you might be able to watch BBC America uh, through something like uh, Buffalo, Buffalo's WNED. But this is broadcast from Britain, um, and there's a six-hour time difference. So if, if you want to start watching evening television, you start watching at lunchtime. Um, if you want to know what's happening tomorrow, you can go to Australia to get the future. Because Australian ABC television is there. ABC TV, Australian Broadcasting Corporation. It's also on this. So you're showing us a sample of what is available. There's yeah. lots more. There's All there are... I have looked around on the internet for repositories, um, and there are literally thousands of them. There are three, pretty much, that give you the things that you would probably want to watch. As I said, um, foreign television, whether it be Britain, Europe, Africa, uh, Russia and Asia, Australia, uh, everything from news to dramatic uh, programming is available to you. Um, but there are other things that are available to you if you're into that kind of thing like sports, live sports, not rebroadcast, live sports, um, for all of the, the, the sports that are not North American. <laughs> um, it was on here a few days ago and it kind of disappeared. I'll have to go find it again, but all five of the TSN channels were on here for, for sports. Yeah. Um, okay, specialty channels um, are pretty much available on XBMC, but they are not as a live play. What you would get from them would be the recorded programs that you saw. They're not live. Okay. If if you yeah if if you wanted to watch Doctor Pet Vet. If you wanted to binge watch that from now until next year, it's available. Oh, okay. Okay, but you're watching the recorded program. You're not watching live every day. Okay. Um, the Food Network is on here with their re uh, recorded programming. These these uh, specialty channels, let's call them, that you're paying for on um, on. Um, source cable or satellite TV. Um, they're available on here. You'd have to go looking for them. Um, I would have to go looking for them if you wanted me to set up a box for you. But they are there for the most part. Well, uh, that they would just be in the movie section. And here again, you can binge watch to your heart's content. You know, you can you can start watching old movies at six in the morning, and um, turn them off. You know, at ten at night when you're done binge watching old movies. Um, so um, the variety of programming seems to be endless. I've only been fiddling with this now for about a month, um, and every day I go looking for new things. But and I'm finding. Them. I'm finding new things. Oh, so it's easy to use then. How do you look for new things on that? Um, you have to load up as many repositories as you can find. Um, on, this, on this particular computer, I only have three repositories. Um, I mean, where did they come from? Here again, this, this is an enthusiast has gone out and aggregated a list of channels and called it a repository. So you download his repository, and these channels, uh, shortcuts to these channels are available. That's how you're getting them. You're, in fact, in fact, if I click on uh, 5 USA, I am clicking on a shortcut to video that's already available. 
It's just a shortcut to get to it. That's all the repository is. Okay, we pretty much beat that up. Um, it's really simple to use, and like I said, I prefer using a mouse to a uh, to a remote control. And we'll just exit out of that so I can close that down. Um, and we'll now go over to this box and we'll do some things over there. Now then. Who among you Who among you wants more pomplamoose because I still have the file on this? <laughs> Just don't play the same song, right? <laughs> it's the same one. It's it's that great Mr. Sandman. Uh, so, do we have any takers on that? Yes or no? All right, I'll pass on it. Okay, there we are. We're up. Now then, um, any questions from last week about uh, anything we talked over, which is... Okay, now, you said you had a question, so fire. Yes. I have a little icon of Java. Yes. And it's for updates. Yes. To check for updates. Yes. Now I have a blank page. If I hover over it, it still says Java update. Right. Yeah, but it's just a little blank page there now. What causes that? <coughs> oh, so and if you clicked on the Java update, would it begin the update? Yes. Okay, that's fine. It's, it's just that perhaps the icon has forgotten what it's supposed to look like. Oh, okay. So it's not a problem with the computer. No, no. It's okay. just the icon has forgotten what it's supposed to look Sometimes like. Sometimes my sound one won't come um, as, up. As I've mentioned before about sound, uh, sound and computers has been a bane of computers ever since it was invented. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes it doesn't work worth a damn. Restart. I to my other sound. Yeah. I know how to get to yeah. another one. But just in that little cast right there. Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to be there. Uh, if it's not there, restart and see if it comes back. Yeah, it will. When you restart, yeah. I've played yeah. with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. That's. But I just don't know if somebody was hacking in or. No, there's. Uh, like I said, the issues with sound and, and um, how sound works and the programming for sound. Um, are buggy at the at the best on uh, even the best computer, even the best uh, sound hardware and the best sound software. It's buggy at best. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. I find that when I, I'm sorry, Go ahead. when I'm on the internet, it's messy. But when I'm not on the internet and I'm playing music, it's just wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sound on the internet, uh, you're right, can be messy. Um, I have, uh, as, as the videos that I make, I hope are getting better over time. The sound is getting better. Um, you can have the crappiest video imaginable for a YouTube video. If the sound is, is great, people will watch it. If the sound is crappy, you can have the, the best flashiest video in the world. People will not watch something with bad sound. Hopefully, our videos from these sessions are getting better. A uh, few more tweaks to do on it yet, but they seem to be getting better every time I do them. So that's a good thing. Um, yes? Missing icons. If you refresh the screen, will they come back? Missing icons. Did the icons go missing because you clicked on a, on a box that said, we've noticed over the last month that you have not used these programs. 
uh, very much in the last little while. Would you like me to clean up your desktop? Yeah, I that. <laughs> that that's still happening. If if just once you clicked yes, they're gone. Oh. They have not gone away completely. But uh, let me just see if I can find them. Uh, view. What will happen um, if you right click anywhere on the screen and you go to view your, your icon sizes, <coughs> whether they're arranged automatically or through a grid like I have them here, um, and click, uh, clicked on show desktop icons and show desktop gadgets. Um, sometimes the check mark from show desktop icons goes away. And so you just simply recheck it. Let me just check that, uncheck it, and see. we will see how many of them go away. And they all went away. Oops. <laughs> well, that's not an oops. It's not an oops. Because um, if you right click and go to view and go to show desktop icons, come on, and put a check mark beside it, they're all back. <laughs> okay, if you clicked on that box that, uh, that prompted you to clean up your desktop of unused icons, you can go and get them back from the, uh, from the, the programs bar just simply by opening your list of programs in the start menu, go to all programs, find the icon that has disappeared, right click on it, copy it, and then right click on it anywhere on the desktop and paste the shortcut. Okay, and you'll have your icon back. Uh, Microsoft tries to be helpful in that way and that's why from the very beginning of these things they were called personal confusers. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, I've noticed a little sound icon that's at the bottom there. Yes. If I leave it on when I turn the computer off at night, it don't come back if I've left it on. If I've turned the sound off, it's always there ready to be used. But if I leave it on, damn, then I have to go to my computer, turn it off there, turn the computer off and put it back on to get the icon. <laughs> oh my God. That's quite a performance. It is. <laughs> oh, because I, I press... You're getting oh, better about... Think, you're, you're, you're getting better about not forgetting the sound icon? <laughs> yeah, because it's such a nuisance because then if I... Okay, so the, the you're, what you're telling me is the icon disappears altogether. Altogether if I okay. leave it computer says, oh, I'll yeah. leave sound on all the time. And uh, here's, here's a place you can check, Brenda, to, to see. You can go into control panel. Yeah, I have to. That's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> I and, by myself. and you can go to the, the entry for the sound, right? Yeah. Uh, there we go. The entry for sound. Open that up. Um, and so um, you can also um, no, you can't get to that to this from the uh, desktop if the sound icon is not there. If it's there, you can get to it. Um, and so you on the playback side, you want to make sure that the speakers are checked, right? Yeah. You put a check mark there. Uh, click apply and OK, and the sound comes back on immediately. Or do you have to reboot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're going to have to get a whole lot better about remembering, <laughs> because that it, it may very well just be a. Um, uh, Seems to be just the way it does it. But yeah. The thing is, then okay, it's on, and I'll turn music on, but then when I go to play. A game, it's making those stupid noises that games do in the background, and of course, they haven't got that to pop up and turn the game noises off. 
Yeah. So down and okay. <laughs> um, I wonder if there's a way to put that icon there without turning it off. Um, I believe there is a way to put a shortcut on here. Let me just uh, let me just check and see. Not from there. I go to um, my computer. Okay, here's what you can do, Brenda. You can take this um, icon for sound in the control panel, yeah. and you can copy it over to the desktop just simply by holding your mouse button down and dragging it over to the desktop. You'll see that uh, when I did that, um, I got the little shortcut item arrow. If I let go right here, okay, it's made a shortcut um, for the sound, which will always be there. Oh. So you can then go back in and rather than going through the, the control panel and hunting it down, yeah. if you just click on this, it will open. Okay. All right. Okay, anything else? I'm sure you don't want any Mr. Sandman. <laughs> I get a question. Yes. <laughs> when, say for instance, it's Java, you have to update. Right. Okay. And the little check mark for ask is there. So you say, no, I don't want it. You take it off. How come it's still allowed to put things in your browser? Because the, when the, you said about the cleaning, yes, you go to the yeah. cleaning and it's in there. Yeah. And, and like I'm saying, isn't that against somebody's policy? Because you've <laughs> taken it off. You don't want it. And they're still putting it on. When Java was a freestanding company, and it was selling its technology to whoever wanted it, um, to make applications and web pages and all of that run seamlessly and quickly and, and all of that good stuff that web pages did and still do with Java technology. Um, none of that seemed to be a problem. Java the company got bought. Bought by Oracle. Yeah. Oracle, the only reason for buying them was to make money. And it's not that Oracle approached some of these other iffy outfits like Ask. Ask approached them and said, well, we'd like to put our technology in, uh, in your your Java, your Java loader, is that okay with you? And Oracle said, give me money. You can do any damn thing you want. Within reason. And so that's how that happened. And, and uh, it's become more and more and more invasive over time. Um, can you get away without using Java? In a lot of instances, no because a lot of the game sites require the latest iteration of Java to work, particularly Facebook games. Pogo games as well. There are a few others that require Java to work. Um, you're stuck. Yeah. Every time you update Java, just go back yeah, in and take the stuff out. Take it out. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we will, we, yeah, there are two ways to get to where you need to be. Um, for what would be in the toolbar of Internet Explorer. And I'm just going to launch Internet Explorer right here. And you'll see that I have a toolbar. Yeah. Okay. How did I get that? 
go up here to the very top of the window in the blue part of the window and right click. Oops, that's not what you want to see. You want to see, that's not what you want to see. Am I clicking in the wrong spot? It must be. I must be clicking in the wrong spot. You click down in the beige part the top? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Down here in the beige part, if you can find an empty spot, if you right click, you will see an entry for menu bar and favorites bar. Make sure that there's a check mark there. Okay. And then when you put a check mark there, you will get your toolbar back. Okay. Okay. Now, once you've done that, you can then go to tools. Mm -hmm. And what you want to do is manage your add-ons. Right. Okay. And you can manage your add-ons from here. If you've, uh, in your search providers, you might have a whole list of things. Make sure you have the one that you want as default. Google or Bing or whatever. Make sure you've set that as default. And then just go through and delete all of the rest. If you just hover over it here, over on the right, um, I don't think it's going to do it because it's the only one there. Even if you Bing yeah. 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 Um, if you highlight, if no. Uh, if you highlight the search engine you want to get rid of, this down here on the lower right will, uh, will light up remove. Click on remove and it makes it go away. But make sure you have the one you want um, as the default. And there's a bu another button here. If you, set, uh, if you had two search engines here and you click on one, then set as default would light up. Okay? So there you go. That's how you get to those. The uh, if the other way. I never use it, so. Yeah. The only, but then I thought, well, if it's going to Google Chrome, it's got to be going to the Internet Explorer. Yes, for the most part, yes. Yes, and I couldn't get into it, and I thought. Yeah. I that, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right clicking. Right yeah, right clicking right. here where the toolbar should be. Yeah, and then go for the menu bar. And and. Activate the menu from there. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. I have another question. Yes, Brenda. Has MSN and Yahoo joined forces anywhere? Because my MSN bar now offers me Yahoo and Pet Home Page, and there's no program to delete them. Um, where they come from? Yahoo Search is where it all comes together because Yahoo search is powered by Bing a Microsoft product and so they're putting a lot of, of, uh, of cross uh, cross site stuff here um, if you go to your Yahoo page you will see a lot of stuff I don't have a yeah page. yeah what? well if you did you would see a lot of stuff from Bing and from Microsoft uh, because the, the, the Yahoo search is powered by Bing. They're getting out of that. They're, they're releasing from that contract and they're going to try their own search, search product here next year. Uh, we'll just have to see how it works. Who Yahoo is? Yeah. Oh. yeah. They've been working on it for a while. But, uh, the yeah. little cross and the, it goes out the toolbar, same as, and look at Pet's homepage. It's a real cute little puppy, but I don't want it. Yeah, same thing. Um, you can remove that um, if if it's uh, if it is a shortcut. Like I have a shortcut here. Okay, yeah. is a shortcut there? Yes. Yeah, okay. Shortcut. Then yeah. if you if you right click on it, you will have the option to delete it okay. right here. Okay. Okay. So you can delete um, uh, shortcuts in your in your favorites bar that got there by God knows how. Yes, God knows. So you can delete them from there. All right, uh, Internet Explorer. Um, we've gone through. Now, this 
um, this is an older version of Internet Explorer, and the reason I, I can tell that is, is this black bar right here. But if I go to, to, to help, and um, if I click on help, and click on about Internet Explorer, it should tell me that I have an old version, which is Internet Explorer 8. I should not be using that, and I don't. You know, you use the latest browser from Internet Explorer, but I don't use Internet Explorer for anything other than teaching, so I don't bother with it. I use Chrome exclusively. Internet Explorer was one I went to get my malware. Yeah. So I went to, I had to go through, or put my Google Chrome on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, we've pretty much beaten that one up. More questions. More questions. How about you, Fred? No, I'm okay. Okay this week. <laughs> the, newer internet, the newer Internet Explorers, like 10 or 11 or whatever, yeah. they're, they're a little safer? If, if yes, I, they're a little safer. Um, uh, the, pro the problem with Internet Explorer, uh, and I think I've gone through this before, but I'll just go through it again. The problem with Internet Explorer is that it is so tightly integrated into the Microsoft operating system. The Microsoft operating system update system requires the technology that is built in to Internet Explorer to allow your computer to update. And the technology that's built into Internet Explorer is called ActiveX. No other browser has ActiveX except Internet Explorer. What ActiveX allows Microsoft to do is to talk to the computer in the voice of God. It turns on the ActiveX control and says, I am God, do what I say, and do it exactly as I say how to do it. And you're not updating through, well, you are updating through the Internet Explorer browser, but when you look at it, it is named something else. It is named Windows Update. Okay, but is it Windows Update is in fact a web browser. That's what it is. It connects to the internet, it connects to Microsoft's services, and those services are displayed as a web page. And when the computer goes forth and says, show me updates, then ActiveX takes a hold of the browser and starts to deliver those updates. No other browser can do an update. Only Windows, uh, Windows Internet Explorer can do updating. I have 22 updates that are optional. Yeah. Can I not touch it? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no. No, they will always remain there as, as optional updates. Um, now, let us just say that you uh, downloaded and installed um, Office 365. One of, some of those optional updates may become critical updates because they are now tied to a program that these updates are required. They're not options, they're required. Okay. So, um, they be, um, you get these optional updates uh, with the sure and certain hope from Microsoft that you will buy additional product for your Windows operating system. So they, they have these updates available. As soon as you load Office 365, there will be an update. And it came from the optional updates that you just have sitting around. Leave them alone. If they are required, so they... Like, the odd time, there'll be one or two. Like, and there is one other one that's from... It's saying update for Windows 7. Well, I've got Windows 8.1. Yeah. So I didn't 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Windows 8 has a lot of legacy programming from Windows 7. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, um, Windows 7 updates will come in. They might be named Windows 8.1. They may not be. Yeah. That be because they're just updating that legacy portion of Windows 7. There are, believe it or not, there are, it's only a small amount now, but legacy programming in Windows goes back to Windows 98. There's bits of code in there that are in fact Windows 98 code. Not very much of it anymore. In Windows XP there was a lot of it. But over, over time they, they've almost totally rewritten these dynamically linked libraries is what they were to help the computer run. Um, and so often as not, they do need an update of some sort or another. DLL, what you just said. That's right. You're missing DLL number whatever and it won't open things. That's right. <laughs> See that? Now, how do I get it back so that it will open things? <laughs> what was... Um, oh, I don't ask because I've no idea now. <laughs> uh, it usually says it won't open a very specific program that you don't have anymore. Okay, it might have. I've forgotten why. Yeah, uh, yeah. that happens uh, when you load a program. It, uh, it loads a bunch of DLLs along with the program. Um, Music, that was wonderful. Yeah. Okay, um, and then what happens is, is you delete the program through, um, through your programs and features. You think you've deleted it, but it missed an entry in the registry that said, go to this D dynamically linked library and use that to open the rest of the programming. Well, the library's not there anymore, but the entry for it is still there. And that's why it's complaining. It's complaining, well, you want me to go to this library? Where did you put it? It's gone. <laughs> that can be fixed. Trace. Okay. Not by you. Time, no, probably not. Next time I see it, though, I'll write down the number and what it was supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But I I saw, I've seen two of them, and no one was in music. Yeah. Well, that's a fix that only I can do. You can't do that. Um, anything else about Windows 8, Windows 7? Um, a little Windows 8, Windows 10 news. Um, there was some chatter on the internet a couple of weeks ago that perhaps Windows 10 RTM release to manufacturing would be ready by the end of July. Um, that makes no never mind to me or to you or to anybody because I will not recommend it until I've seen it for myself. Yeah, yeah I won't do anything to it. <laughs> well, is that going to be worldwide? Yes. Okay, because my sister doesn't have a computer and she was going to get a Windows 8 and I said, well, I'm hang on yeah, hang and on get on. and yes. get Windows 10 when it's available. Oh, that's what I said. Yeah. 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 Um, and this seems to be uh, much earlier than most technology pundits were looking for yeah. and what most of the pundits that I listen to and respect seem to be saying about this early release is that uh, this release of release to RTM, release to manufacture, uh, will be sort of incomplete mm -hmm. as Windows Vista was when it came out sort of incomplete. It sort of worked. Some stuff worked great, other stuff sort of worked. And over time they took care of those problems over about the course of 18 months. This is what they're they seem to be... To yeah, this is what they seem to be aiming at now for Windows 10 is they were going to give you a release that sort of works. It will be stable enough, but perhaps there will be a lot of driver issues with it 
and uh, it will not be as fully featured as say Windows 7, which has been on the horizon now for six, you know, six, seven years. Uh, it's a full feature set. The feature set of Windows 10 right now, as far as anybody can determine in the, uh, the pre-release programs, is not set in stone. It's going to change. So, are we going to get it at the end of July? Mm, maybe so. Maybe so. But I won't recommend it. Oh no! It'll, it'll all be new. It'll be a whole bunch of, of new updates. Yeah. Um, the, I know when yeah. I did from from Windows 8 to 8.1, it took quite a while. Because yeah, because they did yeah, what you did, what you did was not an update. It was an upgrade. Yeah. And this is what will happen with Windows 10. It it will be an upgrade. And then everything after that will be updates, unless they do a point upgrade, Windows 10.1, 10.2. Yeah. The point upgrades are just that, upgrades. Yeah. They are not updates. They are upgrades. Does 7 still get support? Oh, yeah. Uh, 7 will be supported for another couple of years yet. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, and I never mentioned this, and, uh, and I'm not going to do it for you. But there is, a win there is a way to keep Windows XP upgraded in the enterprise. And that is uh, by doing a couple of registry hacks that um, Microsoft is okay with. You hack the registry uh, in a home version and tell it, well, I'm running this in an enterprise environment. Give me updates. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to do that for you. It's time for me to move on. It is time to move on. <laughs> I've, I've loved it. I, I just didn't want to let go. I loved it. I, I, I felt it's like time. that's about 90 It's time to stir the old brain up again. Yeah. It's, it, we're not talking about a death in the family here. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Okay, folks, we've, we've had our hour. It's been great. Uh, please consider XBMC and look it up on the internet and see what it can do. Any chance that you can put some that cleaning stuff in the video so that I can look at it again? Yes, we were going to do that. And it, we were going to do that, and you forgot to ask me about it in the middle of the class, yeah. and so we've gone by it again. How do you spell Cody? Is it C O K O D I? K O D I. Yeah, okay. or X B M C. I spelled it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody did. I it wrong. Wrong. Well, isn't the computer supposed to know that and spell it right? Doesn't yeah. <laughs> yeah. say do I you mean? mean do you mean, mean, mean this? Yeah. I get that. Yes. All the time. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I check my spelling. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.